taking a close look at a big and dicey subject known as a divorce. It is a hotly contested issue in the church today as it was in the day of Jesus. If you recall, there were two competing positions, two factions on the subject of divorce. Are we going to be biblical literalists and say, no, 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 God hates divorce. Or are we going to be really liberal where a man can just boot a woman, unload was the language, unload a woman for any reason? Jesus settled the debate. We are literal interpreters of the Bible. So if you're asking about that verse, I side with Moses. And when you read that Jesus appears to give no exceptions, you need to remember the context tells us he was simply answering the question, which way are we going to go with this subject, liberal or conservative? And what do you know? He came out on the conservative side. Having said that, we run to the rest of our Bible to see what the scriptures teach us about the subject of divorce. Lo and behold, we discover there are indeed carefully applied some exceptions. This is exception number one. Matthew 19, they said to Jesus, well, why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and to send her away? And Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And I say to you, this is Jesus, whoever divorces his wife except for ongoing sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. This seems pretty clear. Whoever divorces his or her spouse, except for sexual immorality, then it's a sin. Do you see how the Bible works? We take Jesus in Mark 10 and we combine him with Jesus in Matthew 19 and we go, oh, I see. So there are some exceptions, but we certainly understand Jesus' attitude and position on the subject of divorce. Please remember that this issue of sexual immorality inside of a marriage really must be done in consultation with your pastor. There are some who might say, one act of sexual immorality and you can divorce the bum. Others, myself included, would say it's an ongoing, unrepentant sexual immorality that qualifies for divorce. Furthermore, what is sexual immorality? Is it literally having a physical, intimate relationship with another person or can it be the sin of pornography, uh, those issues should be sorted out with your preacher. Promise? Reason number two uh, that Jesus gives for divorce in 1 Corinthians 7, if any woman has a husband who is an unbeliever and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is made holy. He doesn't get saved just because he's living with a Christian. Living with a believer it's saying to, it helps somebody not be so naughty. That's all it's saying. For the unbelieving husband is made holy because of his wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy because of her husband who believes. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy, not saved in a better environment. Uh, he continues, but if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such cases, the brother or sister is not enslaved. God has called you to peace. If the unbelieving partner vamooses, then you can get divorced. Once again, practice caution. He goes out to the bar for six hours. That's not separating. Maybe he runs off to an apartment someplace for a week. That's not separating. What is Jesus saying through the Apostle Paul? If your unbelieving spouse 
abandons you. And it is a long enough term which needs to be concluded with your local pastor, then divorce is acceptable. Not liked by God, but acceptable. Reason number three, 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 39, Rexella, a wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she is free to be married to whom she wishes only in the Lord. Do you remember the vows from the good old days? You were in a one flesh relationship with another human being till death do you part, because you cannot continue to be in a covenant relationship with somebody who is simply not living. That means if you are a widow or widower, you are free to remarry. Why? Because you're no longer in that contract. That covenant doesn't exist anymore because the other partner is dead. So you can have permission to get remarried because you didn't really get a divorce anyway. The covenant just goes away. It's no longer in effect. Those are the three considerations that Jesus gives for granting a divorce. Remember, he doesn't like it, but he'll permit it to happen in some very specific instances. Whether you like it or not, if you join the Wretched Club, we can produce more videos like the one you just saw. Would you please consider supporting us by becoming a Wretched Club member and you get a bunch of stuff when you do. Now, if you're saying, I can't afford that every month, we understand there are some things you can still do to help us. You can share these videos. You can follow us on social media, and most important, you can, and let me tell you something, we need this, pray for us. Either way, your support will be most appreciated.